this out. A very generous patron sent me a brand new piece of equipment. This is much, much nicer than the field tech unit I have. And wow. Uh, I'm not sure whether he wants to be named, but cool. This is a really nice addition to the lab and I truly appreciate it. And hopefully we all get to enjoy it in some videos. So far, so good with the signal generator. It's working just great. And I've had a lot of fun just playing around with it. This thing can do like harmonics and this would be pretty cool for RF work as well, I think. So if you know anything about these, throw a comment down below. It's definitely a lot nicer than the old field tech. time to keep working on the Disky project and uh, this came from PCB way with the PCB orders. I'm not sure whether I made a mistake when I was ordering the PCBs. This was like 15 bucks for this stencil and they sent me this big framed version. PCB way still offers the $5 for 10 boards right on their main page of their website. You can pick all the options you want and then get your stencil down below. There's a couple of different options for the stencil. I chose the frame framework by accident. Uh, you don't need to do that. You can do the non-framework and save yourself some money. Pretty cool, but uh, I don't really need a huge frame, but we'll take it anyway. Super easy to line up and lots of weight here, so I think we can do a single board at a time just on the bench, no problem. Service mount LEDs, 220 ohm resistors we'll use for current limiting, and we're good to go. You'll have to wait till the main video goes up, but we were able to use the solder stencil, and man, it just came out Perfect. Here we go. We're putting components on the board, which is pretty amazing. I am so pleased with this. It just Ah, loving it. I'm not liking the Adden Star for this part because the my true microscope uh, with a stereoscopic is way better for depth perception, but this is gonna allow me to make for a cool assembly video. Components on. I am loving it. This is pretty cool. That wasn't so hard actually with that microscope. Just takes some getting used to, that's all. This is actually going to be a pretty fun video when it comes to cutting this together. By popular demand on the community post, everybody wanted hot plate. So we are doing hot plate instead of reflow oven this time around. On a later one, we'll use the infrared reflow, but uh, today she gets the hot plate treatment. Yeah, I got a nice little macro lens on there. I'm dialed in, coming up to temperature, 143, but shooting for 235, which is what the data sheet says for chip quick. And we're good to go. This is going to be fun. 194, things just sort of started to flow into place. So we'll let it finish up and we'll do a proper reflow curve. And this is going to make a cool video. <laughs> this is fun. Twenty, everything's in place, just all floated right where they need to be. Twelve seconds later. Well, that's embarrassing. I have no idea how that happened. That board is useless. Those connections aren't made right. I don't know how that happened, so I guess we're going to have to remake them. Damn it. toy show and tell this is a cool toy that you may not have seen here on the channel before this is my bus pirate these are used to talk serial mainly to electronics components basically hardware hacking where we tie in the actual connections and then we can talk i squared c spi ur jtag and a few other languages i got this thing a while ago and i wasn't able to update the firmware to the newest they've been out a lot of years and there's not a lot of recent posts or easy ways to update the firmware but I figured it out and I put it all in my forum down below uh, so others can repeat it and now we're running the newest firmware with this so that we can do some cool hardware hacking pretty neat My fans came for the Raspberry Pi. These are the double roller bearings, supposedly, and we'll replace this one that went bad. Sure enough, it's the correct size, should do the trick. The only problem is the new one comes with this style of connection, and I don't believe we can use that on the Pi, so we'll maybe have to crimp some connectors on here, and away we go. 
just like that, we're all set. I uh, crimped some new DuPont connectors on there and here's a tip for you. I get these cheap DuPont kits, or I got them. A lot of them come with the wrong size for the female terminal. Those female terminals in both these don't actually fit the connector. These long skinny ones do in these kits. So it's the price you pay for getting from overseas sometimes. The rest of the connectors are fine. The thing you pay for is one of these crimpers. These things are exorbitantly expensive. Well worth it. When you need them, you need them. And they are the only thing that makes this a tolerable job crimping these by hand with side cutters is just a mess so get yourself a pair if you do jobs like this from time to time pretty cool we we'll just hook this back up to the raspberry pi gpio feed this fan and this will go back to supervising all my cameras and home assistant pretty cool and the final tip of this job is to actually check what people ship you instead of shipping a 5 volt fan they might have shipped you a 12 volt fan and all is for naught <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, post a comment if you saw that when I, uh, arg. So I figured out what I did wrong with my PCB here. They are completely useless. The connection is not there between the LED and the resistor. And I don't think the resistors were even tied correctly to the ground plane. I know what happened now. Uh, this happened because I was messing around checking out my silk screen and I exported some Gerbers to see what would it would look like before I had finished routing it. And somehow those were the the Gerbers that got ordered from PCB Way. So replacements have been ordered. Big oops. Uh, you could bodge wire this and make it work. It'd be all hacked up and look like heck. So um, <laughs> vanity got me. I was all obsessed with my cool PCB, my cool silk screen, and ended up ordering duds. Oops. Fail number two to this video, I guess. Day new tool. You haven't seen this on the channel before. This is the JTAGulator. This will allow me to interface with some hardware to see what the heck's going on. You don't need to know the pins and this can be hooked on and it'll pick out the UARTs, it'll pick out the terminals for the JTAG, whatever. It can identify it through unknown terminals, which we are going to use. We're going to use it with this. So this is that switch I got. If you were watching the live stream, you saw this thing. I got this network switch on Facebook classifieds and it doesn't work. I can't interface with it and there's no software available online whatsoever. So I guess it's just too old or whatever. Nobody has it in the archives. It used to be HP, I think, this 3Com, but I think it's a perfectly capable switch and I want to use it, but it's not working as one. So what we're going to do is we're going to bust it apart. We're going to do some hardware hacking and figure it out. I've also been trying to get familiar with my new Rigel uh, frequency gen. Thank you again for this awesome patron. What I'm finding is the user interface isn't just the most intuitive. There's a lot of functionality here and uh, it's taken a little bit for me to get used to it. And the point of me sharing this is it's important to get used to it or I'm not going to want to use it or I'm not going to use it in situations where I could. So trying to get trying to get the hang of it and figure it out. So what works for me to keep the hobby interesting and keep learning is to grab these components from time to time in one-offs. And I got two of these IPS displays. These are 240 by 240 pixel IPS displays. And I went ahead and interfaced it to the ESP8266 microcontroller, which is a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller, and just hooked up the SPI lines. And what I do, do the peel. What I do is I set up a GitHub each time, uh, a repo for the device, and then I add my examples in as I get them working. And this was a bit of a fight on this one. I ended up having to use an older library and I was able to get it working. So this is the Adafruit library and pretty cool. This is going to be hard to capture videoing a, a screen with a camera, but 
this IPS display looks awesome. This is exactly what I thought it was going to look like when I ordered it. They're cheap. They're uh, under 10 bucks a piece. I'll try and remember to put a link below, but pretty cool for SPI display. It's got some nice coloration and sharp. So fun little thing, but where it really shines is when we set up an example, really short example sketch, and within it we set up an array for a bitmap, and then we can program it to the ESP8266, and what we get when programmed is a super cool rendering of the JPEG. That is tack sharp and looks awesome. Pretty neat. Before I leave this one, I edited the code quite a bit, and... This is what I was able to do with just my logo. That is super cool. That is crisp and clean and looks awesome. Super happy with this. Oh yeah, we got a little follow-up task today I'd like to do. Every time I go to do one of these, I have to deal with this. All my jumpers, all my little DuPont wires are just crammed into one of these cases and there gotta be a better way. Printing and electronics just go together hand in hand if you let them. You just have to be a little resourceful and check out Thingiverse and find out the things you want or take a bit of time and design them yourself. This, I think, is going to do the trick. It's a small win, but it sure makes things easier when I'm over here at the bench just working away at things and I can just turn over my shoulder and grab what I need. And now they're finally in color coded order. Maybe you're like me where forever these red ones and these black ones are always missing. Pretty cool. I just need to take some time and straighten them out, but makes sense to me. I've got everything in my USBs over there. And then I also redid this entire area where I've got all my leads here. And uh, I've got troubleshooting to scope, to power supply, everything all living in one big group. Pretty cool.